I want you to feel that. Welcome to this video on how to stream your online group fitness workouts. My name's Lindsay. My name's Ricky, and for this video, we have both decided to wear the same colour of top. This video is going to take you through how to set up your classes and on which platforms. We'll also take you through what equipment you will need. We're going to share with you what we have been doing in our members hub. And we'll take you through the three different platforms which we have used and explored. Number one is Zoom, number two is Instagram, and number three is Facebook. And then finally, right at the end, we're going to share our hack on how you can merge these platforms together, get the best from each one to serve your participants. Okay, so you will need the following equipment. You will need a smartphone. You will need a tripod. However, if you don't have a tripod, check this out. Grab your favourite mug and place the smartphone against the mug to pop up. Better still, if you don't have a favourite mug, pick up your favourite Les Mills Reebok trainer and it acts as a real handy tripod stand. No problem. You would use your smartphone primarily for Instagram and Facebook. You would use your laptop, the one we prepared earlier, for Zoom. So the different bits of equipment, they're all optional, whether you're going to use a laptop or your phone, depending on which bit of kit you're going to use. So the reason why the laptop is preferred for Zoom, whilst you can use Zoom from your phone, is just because you've got the bigger screen here. Now you could do a screen share from your Zoom platform on your phone onto another TV. It's just very, very fiddly and very, very technical. So we would recommend you use Zoom on your laptop and you use your phone to operate Instagram TV and Facebook live streaming. The first platform we're going to talk about is Zoom, which will be new to so many people. And it's worth pointing out at this point, is I have done a previous video on this, which is about six minutes long, and as to how to actually set up Zoom. So right now, what we're going to do is spend a couple of minutes just talking about the pros and cons of Zoom. So the, the first thing we were going to talk about was pay the free version. Yep. So there's two different versions of Zoom. There's the pay and the free version. Now, I think it is worthwhile for everyone to look at the paid version. It is £11 per month and it's not a contract, i.e. you could cancel it after two or three months. And the reason why if the pay for version be the free version, the free version allows you to have a meeting of unlimited people up to 40 minutes. If you want that meeting, your class, to go longer than 40 minutes, you would need to pay for that, and it's 11 pounds per month. You can have unlimited amounts of these meetings per month. And I think the limit is up to 100 people. If you wanted to have more than 100 people on this meeting, you would need to go to the next tier, which I believe is about 24 pounds a month. You all right, Mark? Go see Emma. So one of the big advantages of using Zoom is the two-way interaction. Um, and I guess that depends whether actually or not your participants turn their cameras on. We've been encouraging our participants to do that because it helps us to build connection with the people that are in our workouts and also helps us to coach them as well, um, which is really, really beneficial. Come here, Mark. The other pros of Zoom is you can collect your clients' data, email addresses, names, telephone numbers if you want. When they sign in, they can choose whether to have their cameras on or off. And our little hack is when they sign in, we ask them to pin our camera to their feed. So our, our camera feed to their feed. And what that means is they won't see each other through the workout. They'll only ever see us. Something else which you can do in Zoom is you can have a holding room. So before you actually start your workout, um, your participants will have a place where they can gather online. 
Um, and whether they've got their camera on or off, they can see each other. Um, they may be able to chat to each other in the chat box function as well, which we'll talk about shortly. So I guess the advantage of this holding room is it's a bit like, you know, if you were teaching your live class outside the studio, that you've got somewhere where your participants can connect and interact and get ready for a great workout. So we do two things to, to really get on top of that, is we'll log in 10, 15 minutes early mm -hmm. and we'll hang around for, you know, five or five or 10 minutes after the class just to have that conversation. Yeah, so it's, it's like your pre-class interaction and your post-class interaction, but online. Now, the cons of Zoom have been well kind of documented on, on Facebook while people get used to it. Now, one of the, the cons of Zoom is we are relying on the users, hardware and software, so i.e. what technology they're using and their ability to actually use it. So you are a little bit reliant on that. And the second con, if we're going to call it that, is just we just have to say it like this, your music and visual quality isn't as fantastic as it could be. And there's, well, I can talk to you a couple of things here, but what's really, really important to, in our message is whilst the video quality isn't just as good, the audio quality isn't just as good, your one-to-one -one connection via Zoom is as good as it can be when we compare this with Facebook or Instagram. And we have to remember, Zoom was not designed to stream classes. Zoom was designed for telephone calls. So the fact that we're trying to do it with this and it has this capability is such a strong point. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rhyme off the setup for Zoom and Lindsay's going to jump in with anything I forgot. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. So you set it up as a meeting. You want them to register for the meeting. The reason why you want them to register is you want to collect their data. It is um, safe under GDPR laws. It's stored with Zoom and it's also stored on your database on your device. What Zoom have just brought out is all meetings are defaulted to need a password to get in, which again will protect you and your users from what's being termed Zoom bombing, where other people are coming in and spamming your, your Zoom feed. Once you get the meeting started, so you've set it up with the link, do not put that link out freely on your social media. If you want to put it in a closed Facebook group, that's fine. If you want to put it in your email list, that's fine. Or DM me on Instagram, whatever. The reason why you don't put it out is because you want to be aware of who is getting that link so as you don't get unwanted. When I say unwanted people, people who are just there to cause trouble. Now, now that meeting is set up, you can then start the meeting. So you start the meeting, and this is really, really key for your audio. On your laptop, in the bottom left-hand corner, there will be your microphone option. You need that. You hit the arrow to go up, and it'll bring you in your audio settings. There's a box which says, adjust the background noise. You need that box unchecked. Because what your laptop is trying to do with Zoom, it's trying to determine a difference between the music it's hearing and the difference between your voice. When actually, you just wanted to hear one thing. Yeah? So you want that unchecked. Now you've done that, get your music playing on your laptop. You can do that via iTunes, Spotify, uh, YouTube, whatever, Amazon Music we use for some of it. But you've obviously, and this isn't gonna be a video with this, it's gotta be PPL free, music free, this isn't a video like that, you know, like that, that conversation's been done. <laughs> when you're playing that music, you go back into your Zoom, so you would, in theory, be able to see everyone, but it'll just be you on now. You hit share, it'll bring you up a screen where you can actually share anything that's on your desktop, anything that's open. You'll see basic, advanced, and something else. Go to advanced, and then on the second box along, you'll see a button that says share computer sound. Click that. You will now share the sound coming from your laptop. FYI, the sound quality you hear is going to be about 3 or 4 out of 10. The sound quality they hear is going to be closer to 10 out of 10. Just be aware of that. Your volume will have to be quite low because you're going to need to talk over that sound so they can hear you at the same time as the music. Their volume 
Again, this relies on their software and hardware. If they're playing it from a phone, it's not gonna be that good. If they're playing it from a laptop, it's gonna be slightly better. If they have it hooked up to headphones or a, a good quality speaker, it's gonna be fantastic. And always encourage your participants to be indoors. The temptation is to go outdoors, but music has nowhere to bounce off when you go outdoors. So if they're indoors, again, it's going to be better. What else have I missed? I think it's important to let your participants know um, that they have to dial into the meeting with computer audio. Yes. Yeah, we've had um, some workouts where our participants are like, oh my God, I can't hear. So um, yeah. that's really important because you, you obviously want them to hear you and hear the music. Yeah. So if you do get those messages at the start where people can't hear you, you can actually check in the participant box who has their microphones turned on. And if you cannot see the microphone logo, it means I have not dialed in with comp computer and internet audio. And again, especially if you have an international clients, make sure they dial in with internet audio. Do not dial in with phone audio. I did see a thread on Facebook where an instructor took a class and one of their participants dialed in using their phone and their phone company charged them 94 pounds for that 30 minute workout. And it was a yoga workout because I know who the instructor is. So let, let's not have that. So computer audio. So to summarize, set up a meeting, have your audio settings with the box unticked, have your sound being shared and have your participants put your video feed pinned so as that is the only thing they will see. Cool, so the second platform that we're going to talk about is Instagram and Instagram Live. So the advantages of using Instagram are the sound quality will be so much better, you will reach a larger amount of people and your followers and everyone on Instagram will get instant notification as soon as you go live. And anyone on Instagram can access your workout. On the flip side, anyone on Instagram can access your workout. <laughs> your workout will only stay on your story for 24 hours. So, you know, once you've, you've been live, 24 hours later, it's gone, it's disappeared. With Instagram, we do have the disadvantage that it is a one-way transaction, a one-way interaction. So you can't actually see the participants that are taking part in your workout. Yes, you know they're there because you can see who's watching your, your live workout and you can see the comments that are coming through, but you can't actually physically see what they're doing. And lastly, music licenses. You've got to make sure the music that you're playing is royalty free um, because if you play anything that is not, Instagram will shut down your workout. From an operational point on Instagram, it is really, really easy to get set up. <laughs> because that's all you need. You're gonna have your phone in that letterbox format. Now the temptation when you do it on Instagram is to have your phone that way on selfie mode so as you can see the comments coming in. Now if you wanna operate like that so as you can respond to the comments as they're happening, that's fine. Just be aware your selfie camera is inferior when compared to that camera. And because you've only got you know one way interaction anyway, if you're trying to respond to comments here, it means you're not doing the workout. And it also means that they're not doing the workout because they're the ones chatting to you. <laughs> so good practice is to have your phone set up about eye level with you. And remember, because it's a vertical camera, if you're moving massively left and right, you won't be in shot anymore. The really good thing Instagram is good for, as Lindsay spoke to, is anyone with Instagram can access this video for that 24 hour period, which is both a strength and a weakness. So it's a strength because anyone can access it. It means you can get a massive reach of people. So basically the way the Instagram algorithms work, anyone who regularly engages with you on Instagram, if you go live, they will get a push notification to their phone if they have been active on Instagram within the last hour, or they are normally active at that time on that day. That's a bit of a complex even for me to say and understand. <laughs> and the second thing that's actually good about it only being on for 24 hours, it means people only have 24 hours to do it. So they're not gonna sit and let it sit there for two or three days because they know it will be gone. And another thing you actually have on Instagram 
live is you have the ability, once you've gone live, you can save it to your story or to discard it. So you could potentially just set this up to disappear. So it's a good way to create accountability, uh, scarcity, and create appointments for people that they have to attend. Yeah, and a real good tip as well is to promote the fact that you're doing a live. So on your story, give your followers notice that you will be going live at 6 p.m. tomorrow night to do XYZ workout. Now, the third platform I want to talk about is Facebook and specifically Facebook groups. The reason why we're talking about Facebook groups is Facebook over the last lot of months, not just through the times around at the moment, has become a much more conversational place and people feel safe in Facebook groups when they're with people who they know and support. Now, a lot of the things we're going to chat about here are the same as what we were going to talk about Instagram stories in terms of the pros and cons. You've still got the same one-way interaction. You still have the same rules to dance around with your music licensing laws. The real pros if it's in a Facebook group is you can really, really control who sees it, i.e. you have to give them access to that Facebook group. And again, another strength off the back of this is you get to start to create a Facebook community. Now, just to talk very, very quickly about if you were going to stream your workout on Facebook itself rather than your Facebook group. The way the algorithm works in Facebook is very, very different to Instagram, so it will not push it to as many people. And when it gets shared by people, if it doesn't get interaction on the person who shared its page, the algorithm will actually punish you for it and it'll start to suffocate not just that video, but your future posts as well. So that is why we have success and certainly encourage anyone else to use a Facebook group, even if the only reason why you're using that Facebook group is to stream your workouts. Now, from an operational point of view, the difference in Facebook compared to Instagram is do not, Facebook hates this, do not video like this. You video like that on Facebook. Facebook is made for landscape, Instagram is made for portrait so please video like this and again the same rules apply you're better to video like that so you're using this camera rather than your selfie camera so I could have the same conversation right now. Ricky's already mentioned about the advantage of having a Facebook group is creating that community outside the studio and, and then I guess the times that we're in right now it's important that we stay connected so in that group in your little community that you build it's also important to give your members added value and added content. So this is a perfect opportunity to drip feed some other content into that Facebook group that will help serve them through this time. So it might be top tips to stay positive. It might be um, some nutrition advice. It might be some sleep advice. It might even be some social time. So something that, that we've introduced in our groups is that we have coffee catch ups, we have quizzes, and it's a chance for us to connect outside the workout. When I say pub, you say quiz. Pub. Quiz. Pub. Quiz. <laughs> and then what you can also do in Facebook groups, and it, not a lot of people know this, is what Facebook have introduced in groups is something called a units, which is a fancy way of saying folders. So you can categorize all your content. So you could put all your streamed workouts together. You could put all your nutrition content together your pub quizzes together, whatever you wanted. So it means people can find it easy access. So if you think about your Netflix platform and you've got all your folders like action and comedy and adventure, whatever, you can kind of have the same idea in your private Facebook group, which is where you can start to grow your community. Shh. <laughs> can you hear our dog? Lockdown life. <laughs> so here is our hack and our formula for success to creating your own online studio lead from zoom this is where you're going to get the most interaction so you've got your zoom set up and you would stream your class from zoom just like that see i prepared that earlier so I, on my laptop screen, I can see all my participants. You would use something called gallery view. Once you get set up with Zoom, you'll see that straight away. The second thing you're going to do is all of those people who do your workouts, you want to put them into your Facebook group. 
you stream each class into your Facebook group. And then what that will do, it will allow anyone who didn't get to that workout, they can then do it in your Facebook community later. And you can choose to keep those videos and those workouts in your Facebook group forever. Or you could say each of them have a one month lifespan or a two week lifespan. You can decide that in your own time. And then the third thing you could do, I would say do this at least once a week, possibly more. Depends on what your goals are is to stream it live on Instagram once a week as well. And that's going to, that's your marketing, that's your brand awareness, that's, this is what we're doing. And it reaches into more and more people and potentially brings more and more people into your ecosystem. And that is where this is now monetizable, i.e. you can charge for this. So you can charge people to do a one-off class, you could charge people for a membership to your Facebook group, which remember, you're gonna pack with content, which is more than just workouts. You're gonna serve them a community. And it is chargeable per class, it is chargeable per week or per month. As long as you're providing a service for them. So if you lead with that idea of serving them content that will be valuable for them, yes, now, but in the long term, then that is monetizable as we've said. There are a couple of different ways that you can charge for these. Probably the easiest way that you already have set up right now is your PayPal account. What you can do on PayPal is you can create a pay link and you can give that link to anyone and then you can actually set up direct debits on that or standing orders, they might be called on PayPal and that would then give your chosen people access to your Zoom link your Facebook group. You can of course do the same with bank transfers. PayPal is just easier for a lot of people because it's one link. So I think that's it. That's our top tips for using the three most popular platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and Zoom, um, to continue to serve your audience, to give them their group fitness classes. And then right at the back end here, you've, you've heard how you could potentially monetize it and turn it into something which serves your people in a way that is more than just group fitness workouts. So what you can do right now is create your Facebook group, go on and create your Zoom link and get a friend and start to practice how you're going to run these workouts. And once you've done that, if you have any questions, give Lindsay and myself a little shout and we'll be able to help you out.